Okay, this video is advice for college students. Um, so the first thing I'd say is choosing where you're going to go to college. What's the best place? And it really depends. I would say in general, you want to save money because nobody really cares that much where you went to college, especially if you intend to go on to grad school. You know, nobody ever asks somebody it doesn't, nobody cares where somebody went to college. So if you can get your college education, you know, online, that would be great. The cheaper, the better. So you can save that money, tuition money for grad school or for something else. Most colleges are very generic. You know, a pre-med student, for example, takes the same class as any college they go to. And there's always going to be a couple required classes the freshman year. So the college can force you to go four years and get more money out of you. So, you might as well get all that stuff as cheap as you can, um, especially if money is tight. Um, you'll, you'll financially be better off down the road. Now, there's other things that affect choosing a college. Some people really want to go to an Ivy League school or a place like that. I think it's quite overrated. And the reason I say that is I went to Stanford, for example, and then I went on to med school at University of Illinois. When I was at, at med school, what I noticed was at Stanford, out of my freshman dorm, 12 pre-meds, only four of them got into med school. And then I go to med school, and there's all these kids that went to, you know, local commuter colleges um, or these other less expensive, less competitive schools. And these kids who went to Stanford, all of them are at least 99% something in their SATs and all that. But it was just a very, very competitive place academically. They could have easily gone somewhere else and done really well. Uh, so that's one of the downsides because you have to study so much just for every class that you don't have as much time to experiment with other things. Plus, you know, I had a wrestling scholarship, but a lot of people were paying, you know, a lot of tuition money. So that's expensive for their families. Um, there can be other things that affect your choice of college. Like if you really want to live in a warm state, then go to college in a warm state and consider living there. Um, it can be nice to live at home. It's cheap. You stay in touch with your old high school friends. You get your, your mom to do your laundry probably, something like that, you know, cook for you. That's a good deal. Um, save money on board. Um, if you don't know what you want to study, that's another good reason to go to a junior college first and just sort of get that figured out. Um, it's so much more expensive to go to a four-year college. Go to a college that seems to support your values if, if that's relevant. You know, some school might be nicer to you, might be more likely to encourage you and support you. See if that's the case. Um, if you want to study science, uh, get really good at science. If you want to do humanities, do something to make yourself really good in humanities. And by that I mean, I'll give you an example, like Michael Sugru, the great philosopher, professor, teacher, in his early years around, you know, finishing up high school, early college age, he decided to read the entire Bible, read everything written by Nietzsche, read everything written by Shakespeare. That's an interesting thing to do. So you want to do something that distinguishes yourself in some way, whatever it might be. Um, Okay, so that's the thing. Put a lot of time into thinking about college, and if you can't make up your mind what you want to do, then do whatever is cheap as possible till you figure that out. Um, try to find if there's a mentor person. If you know what you want to do, try to find a place where there's a good mentor person because a lot of times one great mentor person will advance your career and teach you more than you'll learn in some generic uh, program or place. Okay, now here's really the big challenge that I've seen for college students is how do you succeed in a tough class? In my experience with college students, most of them fail their first semester of college, meaning that, for example, they take pre-med, they wanna go into pre-med, and it's just too difficult for them. But a lot of times it's too difficult for them because they don't know how to approach it. They try to take too many difficult classes their first semester, and they get crushed. You know, They're not ready for calculus, physics, chemistry, et cetera, et cetera. And here's my point. Make sure you're ready. Never walk into the class unprepared. That summer, you should be studying. Take these classes in, <clears throat> let's say, in a junior college, not for credit. Do an online course, not for credit. Or um, do just a DVD course. Um, some way or other, get yourself more time because everybody's a lot smarter second time around they've seen the material. If you're not ready for calculus, sometimes it's because you need to repeat some of your algebra, algebra trigonometry. Whatever it is, do whatever you have to do but you should be studying all summer to get ready. That first semester, take fewer classes. If you need help, take a class in study skills. 
Um, but also really simplify your life. Be kind of Spartan. The, the most successful people I've seen in my life in academically challenging situations and also in sports to some extent is people who are kind of Spartan. They make their life real simple. For example, what am I getting at? When I first went to Stanford, there was all these kids from the West Coast, like California, and they were like kind of glamorous. They had gone to high school somewhat locally, and they knew a lot of other kids, and they went to all the parties. Their parents bought them a car. They've had their, their girlfriend with them, and they're kind of showing off at the party. And what I'm trying to say is none of those kids got into med school. In my experience, the more social life the kid has, the less likely they are to be academically successful from what I've seen. And so the kids who did well were the kids who were like, you know, stories like so-and-so was from Taiwan, his fam parents owned the restaurant, and he they all saved up money so he could go to college, and he had to study and do well, otherwise he's back working at the restaurant the rest of his life. That guy would study his butt off all day long. Um, I had another friend... Uh, his father was like a radio disc jockey and his father was a real educated guy and conversational on a bunch of subjects and his son was like that too. He's my friend and man, he was like an A plus student at Stanford. He just wanted to talk about science and biology and history and he just loved the education of it and his enjoyment of it made him a great student. And he actually taught me a lot about how to become a better student. So that attitude of being grateful for the opportunity to have education, because basically what it comes down to is America is a relatively speaking rich country that a young person has time to go around for four years and just focus on getting themselves educated. That is a great luxury, you know, ever since the beginning of history. Most people have been poor peasants or serfs just trying to scratch a little food out of the ground. So to get four years to just hang around in a beautiful campus and educate yourself, that's a wonderful opportunity and uh, be grateful for it and make the most of it. Uh, so that's what I would mostly say is study more than you think you need to. There's about triple the workload the first uh, semester of college compared to high school. And you want to be as energetic as you can. No BS. Don't be out drinking. Don't ever use any substance abuse. Don't ever take any stimulants. You don't ever need to do all-nighters. Just learn to have good daily habits and learn a little bit each day. And you can handle the tougher classes. And you'll, you'll get better with time. Because that's the, the, the hardest part, to break through that initial obstacle of transforming yourself into an excellent college-level student. But be aware that you really can you can increase your academic IQ about 30 points if you do all these study skill stuff. Other stuff I talked about, you know, how it's a memorization contest, you need study skills. I pretty much talked about all that stuff in my advice for high school students. So if you want, you can hear it there. I left some of the text of all that there, but it's the same thing. But that's the main point I want to make is just ramp up all your energy to make a breakthrough transformation to becoming a better student that first semester and keep on pushing. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And focus on becoming educated and becoming a great student so that you could be great in any subject. It doesn't matter what the teacher says. It doesn't matter because I've had students sent to me for tutoring <clears throat> and they're like, well, the teacher sucks. You know, I can't understand them. They don't speak English well. And then the teaching assistant teaches and they're a jerk and I don't like them and the class sucks and it's not fair and it's all blah, blah, blah. And what I'm trying to say is you have to <clears throat> get to the point where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the teacher is. It doesn't matter who the teaching assistant is. It doesn't matter how they structure the class you're just a top-notch student and you will get an a and you will crush it no matter what and that's if you if you learn all these study skills and memorization techniques you're so far ahead of everyone else you just walk in the class knowing you're going to crush it and you know it took me a little while to get to that to that point but I got to that point and then school was just you know I had to work a lot but I always knew I was going to crush the class. So you want to get to that point. And what I'm trying to say is it's possible. You just have to be aware that it's possible and make the effort.